Hello and good day. Today I just want to run through a basic overview of how to render in D5 render. So this is my Revit file. You install your D5 plugin, um, click on the start button and um, it like syncs to automatically with your D5 project. This is D5. It turns it on and live syncs. So there are five steps I want to take you through producing the render very quickly in D5. The first one is composition. The first thing you want to do is to set your views and create scenes for renders in D5. It's easy. Once the model is in D5, you try and get a good view. There are two ways to set your views. You can set your views using the navigation of, of orbit or fly. So for now, I'm in orbit. So it allows me to orbit rather than uh, use the key buttons of movements ASD to, to move around. So I just want a front view like this. So it's a school renovation building. You can also turn on your grids to help you in composition so that um, you can use the rule of thought to place your building within the section of the, the frame that is very viable. Pressing F8 allows your building to, to have a very stable two-point perspective. This is what I've just done. And this view is looking good to me. So I'll go ahead and save the scene. For you to save a scene, move here under the scene list and click Add Scene. Once you do that, uh, you can scroll down. This is the scene I have just created. So now that's basic for my composition. When you are doing composition, you could place elements around. I've already done that. You can see the entourage, the boy walking, the man, the football, and everything. So you should make sure your scene is well set up like I've done mine. One new feature of D5 is the fact that it has layers. So you can see the vegetations are a separate layer. So lighting is a separate layer and the default layer where the, the imported file is. So this enables you to control how you work. Now the next thing is lighting. Now for you to do proper lighting for your views, you need to turn off all the whole light in the default scene and then start working on your light step by step. So let me just go ahead and then turn off all the whole light in the, in the scene, uh, turn off the sun, and then hide all the lighting features. On that effect, you can also turn off auto, uh, so that you can work on your lights by yourself from the very beginning. So I've tried as much as I can on that environment and effect to turn off every uh, possible light settings I'm aware of in the project. So you can see my view is dark, and so I can now start working on um, the light one after the other. I placed some light already in the project, so if I turn on my light, you can see some of those lights, but I want to create a daylight rendering. So I'm just going to start with the skylight and the sunlight. In in D5, there are two types of light. We have the skylight and um, the default one that comes with D5, and we have the HDR, whichever one you choose. So let me start with the skylight. That one is simple to uh, work with. All you need to do is to click on it, move your sun around till you get a very good timing. For me, I want um, daylight views. I want something of this nature and you can offset the shadows around your views. For me, this is okay. Here you can also increase the amount of cloud in the sky and reduce the less amount. I don't want too much cloud at all. And then this is the direction of the clouds on the sky. There are settings for fog. If you want um, a little bit of fog, the colors of the fog can change uh, depending on the intensity of the fog can be increased or reduced. So you can see the effect it's having on the, on the glazing. It can, you can use the fog to control the reflection you might want to have on your, on your windows. That's another trick there. We have other options um, such as um, wind and precipitation. So this, this is just wonderful. With the precipitation, you have rain. Uh, you can control the intensity. You have snow and uh, stuff like that. So I'm not using all these things. I'm just you know showing you for in case anybody wants to create this kind of stuff. For me, my lighting, day lighting is perfect like this. You go to your scene, click on it to update your scene so that it saves the, the day lighting I've created. I can turn on my other support lights to make it much more beautiful. So that's what I've just done. And so I've set up my light and I will click to update it. So this is wonderful. I can turn on other layers, just my uh, vegetation and stuff like that, just to see how the layer looks. This is looking very good and I'll go to the next one. 
The next thing is uh, materials. So you want to apply materials. Some of the materials you apply in your parent software will come into D5, such as the colors of the wall and stuff like that. Even some glass materials normally come in. So, but for you to work on materials in D5, you click on M on your keyboard, and um, this dialog box opens up. This dialog box has uh, two tabs here, online and local. Online is for things you can download online, and local is for things that you've saved up in your, in your own system. And under each online or local, we have model, materials, or particles under that three tabs. So for materials, you select materials, and then you search for each, any material you want, and then you apply the material. So let me just give a quick example. Let's say I want to apply uh, a material to the concrete pavement. So I'll, I'm just going to write um, concrete here, maybe search for concrete material, type in. So because I'm online, it's going to search for all the concrete stuff. The, there are some materials that you need to pay for. There are some that are free. So I can select this one, concrete floor. Once you select, click on the material. Once you click on the object once, the material applies to the object. So it's as simple as that. So, but well, this is the one we're using, so I'm just going to click on it back. I'm not going to dwell so much on materials, but um, basically um, it has a very simple uh, mat method of application of materials and editing it. And after you've done all this setup, you've done your composition, you've done your lighting, you've applied materials, then you can go ahead to click the render button. The render button is here, the, the camera, you see image here, click on it. As you click on it, it takes you to the render mode. Select it as image or panorama, so I want image. You can change your field of view, but I'm comfortable with mine. And here's the aspect ratio. You can set it to window or 2K for size. So I'm going to use the window aspect ratio, but clicking on 2K is some of the preset sizes. And this is the custom sizes. If you click on this icon, it releases it and you can adjust your own. Okay, this is better for me, like a square. I would like it like a square, so I'll put ratio 1, 5 by 1, 5, and then I'll make it 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. So, so sort of this is okay. I might increase the width a little bit to get more volumes. So basically, you, just, uh, you can adjust the, the frame and size of your imagery, and um, you can see the grid to enable you to keep um, tab of your rule of thumbs while doing that. And um, once that is done, uh, you can select the channels to to export. There are many different channels, but I'm not just going to do any of this because uh, basically I just want to export and render. And so you are good to go. That's all the settings. All you need to do now is to click render. So there are two things. You either click render or you add to queue and repeat this whole process for another view. But I just want to click render. So I'll go ahead click render. It will ask me where do I need to save it to. Where am I going to save it to? So I'm just going to save this on my desktop. can rename the image. Okay. And after that, click save. Immediately the image starts to render. It's going to take uh, between seconds to minutes, depending on how big your scene is and how big your image size is. Uh, for mine, I'm thinking it's just going to take about um, let's say a minute or so less than. The good thing about D5 is that it has some post-production elements, even in effects, which I didn't cover, but um, you can also take your images and your different channels to any post-production software like Photoshop or anyone you use to to finish up your rendering. So I think our render took approximately two to three minutes, I'm guessing. I'll have to find out after this video is complete. So this is just a very quick rundown on how to find your way in D5. I'll be making other detailed videos on how to guide you people to render out that types of views. Uh, here we go. So we are done. And then um, I'm going to go and open the folder. I can give you an option to do that. And um, this is the image that we just rendered. So you can see the quality of the image and uh, how beautiful and nice it is. So this is the end of the video. I hope you plant one or two things. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Ciao.